In this week's screencast, we're going to be discussing profiling in Python. Profiling is often used when developers want to decide between one implementation versus another, or they have a particular problem in a code base which is running pretty slow, and they're trying to figure out why. Or just to see if they made some improvements and they wanted to see if it resulted in increased performance or decreased performance. Um, I would suggest against prematurely optimizing anywhere. So if you're watching the screencast and don't have anything to profile at the moment, I wouldn't go out looking for examples because this can often lead to giant sinkholes of time and really bad code, especially when you're just profiling for the sake of profiling, albeit fun. Another thing we're going to discuss is interpreting the data that you're profiling. So for example, if you have a particular profile you just ran and you need to understand what's going on and what the profiles looks like is one, two is interpreting that, that data that you're getting returned. So the cycle would be write some code, it's running slow, profile it, look at the out output from the profile, edit your source to improve it or whatever improvements you may think may improve the code, then profile again and then work your way through all the way down. So most of you may be thinking, hey, it's super easy to profile. All we do is take a timestamp at the beginning, like so. Then take a time start at timestamp at the end. Then to get the runtime, we simply subtract from start. And for the most part, that does work. There are some issues which we'll go on to discuss after this example, but let's just see what this produces. So let's get some values. So x is equal to range 10,000. What we're going to do is we're going to calculate the sum using the keyword sum, and we're going to calculate sum using a for loop. So let's first do using the keyword. So we're going to simply go sum of x. x is now a list of all the numbers between 1 and 10,000. We're going to copy the start up top here. I have the finish down there. We're going to print runtime at the end of this. So let's save this file. Let's execute it. And as you can see, this takes about 0 0.002 seconds using the sum. So let's just quickly copy this number over here real quick. Oh, so I don't want to do that. And then let's do it using a for loop now. 4x, sorry, for number in x. I want to declare total outside of here. Make that zero. Total, total plus equals number. Save that. Let's execute that. So as you can clearly see, to use the keyword sum is much faster. With the keyword sum, it took 0 0.002 seconds, while using the for loop, it took 0011 seconds, which is much slower than using the keyword sum. So it goes to show that the simple timestamp subtracting does allow you to measure performance accurately. Um, the thing with this, though, is it does not take into account multiple runs, so it does not get you an average of how many times this actually ran to get you an actual bearing on how fast it does actually run. Garbage collection is still on. Um, this might affect things when you run them multiple times or just affect the overall performance. This also does not take into account different uh, machines. So if I were to run the same thing on another machine, for example, on a Windows machine, the precision of the timer might be different. Um, I believe that on the Windows platform, they use time.clock. So the next example we're going to cover alleviates a lot of these issues and gives you a command line interface to profile particular parts of a Python application. Next, I would like to introduce the timing module. It provides a simple command line interface as well as a programmatical interface for executing small bits of Python code. It uses the platform-specific time function as well as provides the most accurate time calculation possible and reduces the impact of startup and shutdown times. 
This is done by simply repeatedly running the same function over and over again to get an average. This average is either determined by the number you specify programmatically or by the number that it uses to get a certain confidence interval. So it'll keep running the program until it gets to a certain length of time in order to get a decent confidence interval. This mainly has to do with the fact that some things take shorter amounts of time and precision can be off. Therefore, you need to run them more times to get a specific average. For example, if I were to run some long algorithm that takes a minute or two to run three times, that might be enough to get an average, an accurate average for that particular type. But if I were to time something like a simple assignment, that is a very fast operation and it may lead to incorrect times if not done enough times. So what it, what it does, time it, what it allows you to do is to just run it and it will calculate the time amount of times to run a particular thing in order to get an accurate and confident time, execution time. Before we continue, I'd like to mention that garbage collection is turned off with time it. In our previous example, garbage collection could have ran and could have altered our calculations as we were doing anything. With time it, you, are, you don't have to worry about that. Garbage collection is turned off, so you don't need to worry about it running and having it screw up all your times. So in the previous example, we had the keyword sum calculating the list of values, and we had the for loop clicked calculating the list of values. I've taken the liberty of splitting those into two individual files, and we're going to run those with time it. So let's take a look here at the documentation and how to access time it on the command line. So we simply go python m time it dash help. Nope. I spelled Python wrong. That's why. Should have said yes. Yeah, there you go. So now here you have all the options that you can provide to, to, to time it on the command line, number of times to execute the statement, how many times you want to repeat that, um, set up some setups that you need to do before running your particular script, which type of timer to use. Now, I said before that this time it does take care of it for you, but if you want to use a particular timer and you want to specify something, let's say you're working with a person, a counterpart who's using Windows, you want to compare the times, you can specify which time you want to use there. Um, it also has some documentation on the differences between time and time, it, time and clock. Um, time is much faster, so if you can go to a Unix system, go to a Unix system. Like the precision is more accurate, not faster rather. So you're able to calculate at a greater accuracy on a Unix machine since the granularity of the time is increased. Now, let's run a quick example of the two files that we have here. So in this directory, we have a sum.py and a total.py. So what we're going to do is Python dash m time it dash s, which is the setup. That means we have to import some since it's a file. Sorry, a file and module. And then we need to go sum.main. So out of a thousand loops, the best best of three thousand loops, it took us each loop took, so one execution took 296 microseconds per loop using the keyword sum. So we're going to quickly just change this to total. Import total here and give it a run. And as you can see, this backs our claims that the sum keyword is better for doing this type of thing. And there you have it. So if anybody asks you in the future, Sum is better than iterating and adding to an integer in Python. Now, these numbers may be confusing to you at first glance, and they're like, it says a thousand loops, best of three. This particular function here that we called total main was ran 3,000 times. So I can quickly run an example here just to show you that that is actually the case here. So we're going to switch out the code in here. And we're going to delete that and we're going to import time again. And we're going to sleep time.sleep for one second. This may take a few seconds, but it'll be worth it in the long run. Just so you're clear on whether, so just so you're clear on what's happening, we're going to run this again. This will take about 30 seconds to, to finish running. So we're back. 
and as you can see here it did 10 loops best of three and as you can see it took an on average one second to do this stuff now you may be wondering why the loops here between here and here have changed and I didn't specify anything so as I was talking about it earlier assignments that are very quick it takes it takes a longer a larger sample in order to get an accurate accurate execution time for each so for example let's just do a simple assignment in Python so we're gonna clear this out and time it does take code as an argument we don't need to set up so we can get rid of that we can go a is equal to 1 so this is the simplest assignment probably one of the fastest things I can think of so let's go ahead and do that so as you can see it did way many more loops in order to give you a higher accuracy interval here because from time to time this may change so the smaller the time a particular thing takes the increased number of loops this loop number is calculated so it'll do it enough times that it can fit it in 0.2 seconds which gives you a larger time to calculate the thing now once you get outside of that range it drops down to 10 and then gradually down again but you'll generally notice the shorter the time to do the calculation the larger the number of loops that it'll take so there you have it we haven't still figured out how to profile anything and on a large system or to figure out which piece of code is taking the longest in a particular time so for example we just know how long this whole function takes to run we know how long main takes to run in sum.py we don't know what actually is taking the most time we don't know whether if it's the range that's taking a lot of time or we don't know if sum is the one taking a lot of time and that's the type of breakdown we'll need to move forward when we're profiling real systems. That we'll be covering in next week's screencast. So I'll see you guys then.